Hey everybody, welcome back to Clear for Takeoff. My name is Brian. I am the host of Clear for Takeoff. Today we are doing starting a new series called uh, uh, Careers in Aviation. Uh, it's kind of self-explanatory. <laughs> um, but we're taking a look today. We're in Inverness, Florida, and we're taking a look at, at, at an ag school called Eagle Vistas over here in uh, Inverness Airport. Uh, we're going to be talking with Beverly, the owner, and also with Randy. And we're actually going to be doing some flying in the bird dog, which is one of the trainers here at the school. Uh, really interesting how you know everybody thinks you're going into when you go into aviation it's airlines all the way hey what airlines do you work for well guess what some people don't even ever go to the airlines and you don't have to in aviation and so i hope this series is beneficial for all you wondering what where uh, what type of career you want to go into but um anyway stay tuned and uh welcome to clear for takeoff Hey everybody, I'm here with Beverly from Eagle Vistas. Thank you so much for having me today, Beverly. It's been a pleasure. Um, it, it, you have some beautiful planes, you have a beautiful school, and I'm really honored to be here and um, meet such a staple in our community. Could you tell the folks here on Clear for Takeoff uh, what your flight school does? Sure, sure. Well, we're a specialty flight training school. We specialize in training agricultural pilots or crop dusters, as most people might uh, use that term. Uh, and uh, we can start someone from zero time with no pilot licenses at all and go all the way through to uh, ag pilot and tra wow. uh, commercial training. Or if someone comes to us and they already have pilot licenses or either private pilot or commercial pilot, we can take it from there and finish up the ag uh, course. Technically speaking, in the United States, there are currently no minimum standards by FAA nor our National Association for an ag pilot training, ag pilot flying. Uh, however, we have established ag pilot minimum standards that we've utilized for over 13 years here. And uh, it is it just, it's part of a safety program. Anytime there are standards, that, that uh, is nothing but a benefit. All right, guys, I'm here with Randy Miller, the lead pilot here at Eagle Vistas. Randy, um, I'm curious. What are the uh, requirements to get into ag flying? Uh, you need to strong tailwheel skills to be aggressive, but at the same time, you have to be safe. You know what your limitations are. We show them um, what they can get away with, if you will, and uh, what to look for and how to avoid obstacles. Um, you know, you got to keep your eyes open. You got to keep your head on a swivel and, and just look, look, look all the time. So this takes a specific type of person to want to even do this. What type of personality would you say is really good for this type of job? You got to be somewhat aggressive. You, you got to know your limitations. You, you, you know, it's like guys who ride rodeo and uh, you know what Definitely I mean? Definitely not daredevils. Uh, daredevil. I hate to use that. We don't do aerobatics. Um, we do train some aerobatic pilots. I had one uh, guy who was driving a FedEx truck. And one of the first questions he asked was, when do we learn the hammerhead? I said, I'm so sorry we don't do that. <laughs> but and he'd been flying to pits and doing some aerobatics. So, um, uh, it, but it takes all kinds. We've had some very mild mannered people, uh, race car drivers. We've had um, I mentioned already uh, former military pilots, you know, UPS, FedEx, uh, airline pilots, people all looking for something different. They're tired of driving that big old bus with the 300 people in the back. And I'm home every night in my own bed. What's the pay like? The pay, we get paid by the acre. Okay. All right. So that little handle in there, that spray valve, uh, which is on the inside of the plane, that activates the pump system. And um, flying a turbine, I get 20% of what the plane makes. So general math, uh, my operator charges $10 an acre. I get $2. Right. My, uh, I can typically make $150 to $200 an hour. Uh, now, one of my students, actually my form, my uh, replacement instructor here, because I'm retiring, um, he made a lot more money than me. My best day flying ag, I did 900 acres, $1,800 paycheck. Wow. Yeah, it, it would be nothing, honestly, if you get with a good operator um, to make 90000 in a season. When I'm talking season, so my season, I have to be available for six months. Um, when I was doing fire, my season was only three months. I made 175000 in three months. Doing, in three months? Doing fire. Wow. Air attack. Uh, and uh, it, it all depends. You know, 
it, the, the potential is good. And we don't, we only fly uh, day VFR. Day VFR. Now, now that I've said day VFR, there are guys in California, Arizona that do fly at night. I've never done that. Um, that's not for me. So, so why ag flying? What, what got you into it? This is such a unique part of sure. aviation that a lot of people don't go into. You know, how I got involved had to do with my husband, uh, Randy Mary, who has recently passed away in an accident, but uh, he had been in it for over 30 years and he got in the field because when, when he was a young man uh, ready to work as a commercial pilot, uh, all of the uh, airline jobs were being filled by fellas that were fresh back from uh, military. And uh, since that, you know, didn't fit his bucket, even though he'd been in the uh, agri um, uh, flying uh, his whole life, uh, he wasn't a military pilot. Uh, and so uh, he looked at another opportunity that he had exposure to, and that was ag flying. So he flew all over the country. And uh, it was also a CFI at 18. Wow. So, um, wow. yeah. That's so impressive. That's how we got started. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry for your loss. Thank you. Um, what is the average pay? Okay. There are a lot of variables on an ag pilot's income, uh, what he can make. And so basically we have to kind of talk about different things like the area of the country you're going to work in mm -hmm. and what amount of what their season looks like. Uh, the fellas that get work in, uh, say, Bell Glade down here in Florida, that's uh, sugarcane country. And wow. there is some rice down there and there is some vegetables, corn and a few other vegetables down there, winter vegetables. But uh, those are year-round positions. They are, uh, typically speaking, either uh, uh, turbine fixed-wing aircraft or there are some helicopters down there. And typically those aren't entry-level positions. So while those fellas that work in those year-round positions might make $250,000 a year, wow. they're working very, very hard. Uh, wow. And it, it does, uh, it's, a, it's a hard and long season. The other long season is over here in California. They've got rice country and then they've got winter vegetables too. So some of their fellas can be on that top end. Now let's talk about the corn belt right through here. They have a shorter season. Mm -hmm. So uh, corn corn or soybeans or some, you know, kind of those are the predominant crops through there. And so they might do a little work in uh, March, April, uh, putting uh, some products out. And an entry level position in a piston or a radial engine might make uh, twenty-five to thirty-five thousand for a short window. Uh, and then they'll upgrade. Then when they move up to a turbine, they should be making somewhere between seventy-five and a hundred thousand um, dollars. Thank you so much, Beverly. I really appreciate you showing me your whole entire school. This is amazing what you do here, and um, it was great to meet you. Thank you. All right, big shout out to Beverly at Eagle Vistas. Thank you so much for having me over today. Today was a freaking blast and your school is awesome. If you guys have any questions about school, I'll be dropping a link down below. And if you like the uh, webisode, uh, episode, or just careers in aviation today, you want to see some more of it, you want to see some different careers in aviation, drop a comment below and let me know what you think. And uh, we'll see you next time.